So we have now can enter the virtual space with my colleagues from around the world to discuss a case uh, which is going on behind me in theatres, get some real-time advice about the case. Preparing keyhole surgery on a patient in a London hospital and four surgeons are sharing their expertise, but only one of them is actually here. The others, represented by blue avatars, are colleagues in India, in the US and at another London hospital. They're all using the same type of virtual reality headset as the man leading the operation, Shafi Ahmed. Uh, thanks for joining us everybody. I'm just going to go to the, um, the patient's record. I'm just going to just open up the file. It's what's called augmented reality. We can see things in that space. So, for example, we could see the patient's x-rays, the CT scans, the clinical notes, filings from endoscopy, for example. Not only that, but they're suspended in the middle of the air, in front of you. You can actually pick them up, turn them around, actually walk all the way around these objects, which are actually clinical patient findings, really adding to the interaction amongst those group of individuals across the globe. After the virtual consultation, Professor Ahmed's team successfully remove a bowel tumour from the patient, an elderly woman. Um, and I agree with Salesh that this um, lady needs a laparoscopic right hemicolectomy. Well, the technology is clearly impressive and has major implications for the way surgery is carried out. But this headset isn't cheap. It costs around $3,000. The hope is that eventually it will be affordable around the world. But it's going to come down, it's going to become cheaper and cheaper and accessible to everyone around the globe. And that's the hope that we will have to make sure that we can share these technologies to, to make the world a better place. This head-mounted mixed reality medium is the new frontier of computing that over the next five or ten years is going to transform the world, quite frankly, in ways that the smartphone could never touch. Professor Ahmed also hopes that this kind of technology will allow students in other countries to access first-class training via a smartphone or computer. Uh, this is a right colon cancer. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera, London.